there welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review and thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel your support allows me to continue to do these reviews so thanks and don't forget you can join as a channel member too membership guarantees you a response to your comments from yours truly if you are a subscriber I will see your comments but it might only give you a thumbs up if you aren't a subscriber at all I probably won't see your comment so at least be a subscriber Jays, eh? I've been a fan of Kaigaloo fountain pens since I bought three of their heavy dual fold like 316 models a couple of years back. Here they are in amber, black, and white with swirls. These were very nicely built pens except for how heavy they are. I quickly replaced them with my next favorite dual fold like pen, the Moonman M600. I bought a few of these too. Then came the Jinhao Centennial. And now I have three of these. Then in the last few months, Kaigaloo came out with the 316A, which is much lighter and seems to be an even nicer pen than the M600. So when I saw a new model, Kaigaloo, the 356, a classic cigar shaped pen, I had to have it to see how it compares to the new Kaigaloo 316A and to another pen which seems to be very similar, the Pen BBS 308. So where does this kangaroo stand in this mob of kangaroos? Let's find out right now. Well, this is interesting. Shortly after doing my review of the new and improved Kaigaloo 316, and I'd heard stories that the uh, that Kaigaloo was going out of business. Uh, but uh, obviously they're making improvements to these models. This is a lovely pen. And uh, then I discovered this new model. And it has arrived today. And here's the package. And it says it's a 356 and that looks lovely my goodness and it's kind of like the cigar shaped version of the 316 the 356 to clean this out and do a full review on this lovely fountain pen this is a new one to me the Kaigaloo 356 and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Now, before we look at this new Kaigaloo model, I have to tell you that I've already made a nib swap on this pen. I found these Kaigaloo Architect nibs on Etsy. The listing calls them Eastern Calligraphy nibs, and they're available in two-tone or chrome with two different patterns, the flame motif, which I got, and what they call a grid pattern. I ordered them and received them quickly. One I put into my Kaigaloo 315A Amber, and in my review of this pen, I mentioned that this nib wasn't very good. So finding these nib replacements uh, that were also my favorite grinds was a godsend for this pen. I put the second one into this 356 and I've been writing with it since first inking it up. Now I'll test the standard nib as well, the, the medium nib that came with this pen to show you how that stock nib writes. But let's look at this beautiful new model. Overall, it is a standard sized cigar shaped pen, but just look at that chatoyancy. Let's get a little closer. This is a beautiful, turquoise greenish blue with silver highlights it's a turned acrylic and i don't think i've ever seen a more chatoyant 
uh, acrylic. Just lots and lots of depth and movement. Let's take a look at my 316 next to it. You can see that it's very chatoyant as well. That's not shine, that's chatoyance right there. So Kaigaloo is doing an excellent, excellent job on these acrylics, or at least they're sourcing some beautiful new acrylic rods with which to turn. I'm just gonna bring out one of my early Kaigaloo original 316s. This was my first Kaigaloo 316, the dual-fold style. And you can see in the comparison how much nicer the uh, acrylic is. There's some chatoyant parts in this tiger eye kind of uh, acrylic on the original 316. This is so much more chatoyant. And from the top, we see a standard cigar-shaped domed finial, which tapers up to a gold metal band. Um, ring which attaches the clip which is nicely tapered in shape very springy very usable and it's different from the 316 the cap tapers up to a wide gold band which has a center step up with Kai Ge Lu and some brackets in between those brackets, it looks like you'd expect the model number to be engraved right there, but it's blank. There's a small step down to the barrel, which tapers down to another gold ring, which separates the cigar-shaped finial end, which interestingly unscrews to access the end of the converter. It's a really nice little feature that you'll find is similar on the Leonardo Ferrore, which opens up to allow you to access the converter. I went back and checked the 316 to see whether its finial came off, and it does, but that converter is too short to access on the 316. The cap unscrews with about one turn to reveal a tapering section of the same acrylic material and then the number six size steel Kaigaloo nib. Now this is where I have to bring out the original nib uh, that came with this pen, which I've put into the 316 for purposes of demonstration. And there it is. So that's the nib that came out of the 356 that I've put into the 316. And this is one of the new Kaigaloo nibs. The old ones were more deeply engraved than this. Let's pull out the old one, and we'll see it too. There's the old one. You can see it's deeply engraved. It has the same kind of logo, which has been slightly changed. You can see the old one has Kai Glue underneath. It has that kangaroo right there, uh, but it has a pouch with no joey in it. The new one has very lightly engraved, but there's a little joey in that pouch. You didn't dress up either. Yes, I did. I'm Chandler. <laughs> Dude, what happened? And it has Kaigaloo underneath uh, and some scroll work. And there's a good deal of tipping material on that nib. I've not inked this one yet. We will give it a try. It is a medium. Now let's get a close look at this replacement. Kaigaloo uh, Eastern Calligraphy Nib, which I'm going to from now on call an architect because that's what it is. And it has these flame motifs on it. Hey, do you think there's directions about starting fires in the song, We Didn't Start the Fire? I don't think so. Stuff, stuff, stuff and stuff, history and stuff and stuff, people, people, someone's name, history and sports. You can get them with that grid pattern, as I mentioned earlier. And most of the nib is inside there. So here's the second one I've got. Let's look at the entire nib. You can see it says Kaigaloo on the bottom. And then on the left-hand side, it says 21 KGP. And on the right-hand side, it says NM 
F. The 21K GP means 21 karat gold plated, which I would seriously question, but it is possible, I suppose. And your guess is as good as mine for what NMF stands for. I think it means not medium or fine. I don't think it means what you think it means. It could mean new. Mother pus bucket. It might lose something in translation. My hovercraft is full of eels. Ah, matches. And if we get close enough, you can see that architect grind on that nib where it has a long vertical slit which gives you a thin vertical line and a thick side to side line is sort of like the opposite of a stub the nibs are in a removable nib unit which screws into the section and it's transparent and as you see i can swap it between the 316 and the 356 easily now the replacement nibs uh, come in a two-pack. Here's the item on Etsy, so you can see that they say it's compatible with not only the Kaigaloo 316 and 356, but also with Jinhao 450, 750, Yongsheng 699, Mahjong T1, and C1 fountain pens. So let's uh, translate that a little bit. For Mahjong, uh, substitute Moonman or Maijong, and you can add the Moonman C3 to that list as well. And for Yong Sheng 699, I think you can safely assume they mean a Wing Sung 699 vacuum or piston filler. It certainly is the stock number six size. And these new number six size architect nibs from Kaiglu are a real bargain at only $23 US, including shipping, for two um, from Etsy. But you can also get two of them from Bobby's AliExpress store uh, for $18.95 US, including shipping. I think I'm going to get another couple of these nibs and try them out in my newest Moonman, the C3, which you will see in a review real soon. The section is a good size and has a small flare towards the nib. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section unscrews to reveal a Kaigaloo branded upscale converter. There's the Kaigaloo engraving right there, uh, which has a, careful, reinforced nipple and fits into the gold metal nozzle of the section. It also disassembles quite easily uh, for maintenance and cleaning. The inside of the cap shows no cap liner, but there's a step turned into the inside of the cap which meets up with the section, uh, which seals the nib. The cap posts deeply and securely, and since the cap is so light, it does not back weight the pen at all. The pen is very comfortable in the hand, both posted and unposted. I bought this pen on eBay for $24.99 US with free shipping. It's available in four colors, pink, blue, green, and purple, and three nib sizes, extra fine, fine, and medium. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Kaigaloo 356 with a Lingmo Lorelei, a Pen BBS 308, a Tobaldi Bononia, and a Leonardo Ferrore. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You'll see the review of this new Tibaldi Bononia Bora Bora very, very soon. In fact, I might do a head-to-head -head of the Tibaldi and the Kaigaloo, since both have this incredible acrylic resin and both have architect nibs. This one was ground by nib expert Jack Hernandez. Tough luck, Jeff. Jack! You bet. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And 
and we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Kaigaloo 3 five, six, and it has a medium steel architect nib. Let's check the wetness. It is nicely wet. Again, I've not done anything to this nib. It's right out of the bag. And it's nicely smooth with a good deal of feedback. And the ink today is Leonardo Meraldo, which is a lovely turquoise ink that I think matches the pen rather nicely. Again, the camera is coming out a lot bluer than what my eye is seeing here. Today, Pepperland goes blue. More green and turquoise, blue-green, than what you're seeing on camera. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, well, there's no flex at all in this nib. And all of the line variation comes from the nib, which gives you a thin line in the verticals, and a thicker line in the horizontals. Just like that. The vertical lines measure 0.4 millimeters and the horizontal lines measure 0.6 millimeters which give us a range uh, between a western extra fine to medium or a Japanese fine to between a medium and a broad. And for our quote And for some reverse writing, it's very, very fine. It's actually keeping up, but it's very scratchy. And some quick writing. Yeah, no issues whatsoever. And let's give the stock medium nib that came with the 356 a try. I screwed it into my Kaigaloo 316 amber just to try it out here for the first time. So this is the Kaigaloo. Hmm. 356. I know it's in the 316, but it's a 356 nib. And it is a medium. steel. This may not be fair as I'm dipping it, dip testing it here for the first time. It's very smooth. Very, very, very smooth, like glass. No feedback at all. 
and the line is very thick and very wet how wet that is wow and yeah it's uh, very stiff as well and the ink is Monteverdi Canyon Rust and here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com so what do I think about this nib just on first goes here very very thick line um, I'm gonna get out my I'm gonna get out my sheet here and see whether I can figure out what size this is it's looking like it's uh, coming in at between 0.6 and 0.7 millimeters which is indeed a western medium and a Japanese broad so that's a very thick broad nib so back with the 356 and what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen well there's a lot to like about this pen let's start with the acrylic this is one thing to love about this pen immediately I don't think the video can actually capture the beauty or the depth of the chatoyancy in this acrylic it's quite amazing uh, this one's called blue it is very blue green almost turquoise um, the other colors in this series are also beautiful the pink purple and green look to have the same depth and chatoyancy as this one in fact the line that's available with the 316 has a number of colors and they're all seemingly very chatoyant as well the classic cigar shape makes the pen very comfortable in the hand both posted and unposted the nib on this pen the standard nib I mean is very nice it's very broad and uh, very smooth and I like that it's available in three sizes extra fine fine and medium the fact that there are these custom Kaigalu nibs available uh, to replace uh, the nibs in the stock Kaigalu 316 and 356 is just a bonus uh, these nibs came as a pair so I'm going to put the second architect nib in my Kaigalu 316 if you watched my review of the 316 you'll remember I wasn't pleased with the nib at all and I actually replaced it with a number six size Jinhao until I put that uh, uh, Kaigalu medium nib in there just now now I'm doubly pleased because now I have a beautifully matched pair of Kaigalu pens a dual fold style and cigar shape both with architect nibs that write beautifully well I haven't written with this one but I assume it will be the same and at $26 US you can afford to collect all four colors in this series I must say I'm very impressed with the new Kaigalud models and I hope to see more from Kaigalu in the future plus the added feature of the end finial access to the converter is a nice plus and what do I not like so much about the Kaigalu 356 well I just can't think of anything I think they really knocked it out of the park with this pen if I really want to get nitpicky about it I'd complain that this is blank right here it should have 356 engraved in there but it's just blank but that really is nitpicky everything about this pen is great even the converter is upscale solidly built and easily disassembled so there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and don't forget that you can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month uh, in whatever currency you currently have in your country and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges too Good. and that just leaves it for me to say 
Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.